coming back to life. More than 2,000 years ago, a peaceful culture grew and thrived here, in one of the most inhospitable regions on the planet. The people were called Nazca. They lived in Peru on an arid, harsh strip of land and survived despite severe droughts, earthquakes, and murderous flash floods. The capital city of Cahuachi, built at the crescent of a fertile river valley, was the center of their universe and the home of their gods. What carried them into oblivion, what caused their capital to fall into ruins, has remained a mystery for centuries. Now, little by little, the painstaking work of archaeologists is bringing this ancient civilization back to life. Discoveries made here may also hold the key to the Nazca Lines, as yet inexplicable drawings in the middle of the desert. An immense network of huge yet geometrically perfect designs, completely visible only from the sky. Unique creations whose meaning has continued to entice and escape the best of science. After 2,000 years of silence, what remains of this mysterious and forgotten people? In the south of Peru, a dusty track along the Nazca River between the Andes and the Pacific Ocean. Giuseppe Orefici, director of Italy's pre-Columbian Archaeological Research Center, heads the Nazca project. For 17 years now, he's been tirelessly exploring the remains of Cahuachi. The site is huge, almost 10 square miles. It's a ghostly place, covered with sand and alluvial deposits. The Nazca mystery affects all those who come close. Rounded hills hide the sharp edges of the structures which made Cahuachi one of the most impressive cities in pre-Columbian America. Of these buildings, the Great Pyramid is perhaps the most imposing of all. The great temple, whose staircase led down towards the river, was here. Between these buildings, corridors, terraces, and squares, a whole city is gradually emerging under the archaeologists' careful hands. For Orofici, the task is equal to the size of the site, colossal, but fascinating and uncertain. For centuries, the location has been pillaged by shameless treasure hunters who have shown no respect for the bodies in the many tombs found here. They've taken away much of the history and left the rest to bleach in the sun. Stripped of their riches and gift offerings and abandoned to the relentless sands, hundreds of silent witnesses point to the enormity of the archaeological task here and the need to act before more is lost. 
Sometimes, a startling discovery provokes the archaeologists beyond mere scientific considerations. This is what's left after the raiders have been material, ropes, more textiles. There are thousands. All these abandoned relics, it's material that's lost from an historical point of view. It could have helped to reconstruct these people's past, and everything has been destroyed. The raiders' activities are nowhere near stopping. Look at this object, for example. It's a sling with a variety of colors, a ceremonial sling, very beautiful. The raiders were not interested. They prefer ceramics and the fine textiles that are very popular with international collectors. Every day information is being lost here. Every day pages of history are disappearing that can never be written again. Fortunately, the site is so big, so vast, that our work to collect whatever can be saved is not in vain. We just hope that we can continue our work and save pages and pages in Natska's history. Historical detectives, the archaeologists never give up on a case, whatever difficulties they may encounter. Every year for the last 17 years, Orofici has returned to continue the race to save Nazca's heritage from thieves and the ravages of time. The site is too vast to be entirely recovered at once. But season after season, scraps of history are pieced together. This year, a new site has been opened a few feet from the great temple. Beneath the sandy crust, the old city reappears. As the team digs, they penetrate the different layers of Kawachi's past, from the surface layers dating from the 4th century down to the city's foundations a few feet below and eight centuries before. The city was built from sun-dried clay bricks. It was destroyed many times through flooding, earthquakes, or at the whims of the priests who governed here. Each time, Kawachi was rebuilt on its own ruins. Each rebirth was celebrated with various offerings placed in the foundations of the new constructions. And so the Nazca world is gradually coming to light. An immense city, it was occupied only by priests and devoted to a cult of gods. Not a single trace of ordinary daily activity has ever been found here. Because the Nazcas could not write, the ceramics and textiles found here are even more valuable. Each shard of pottery is a link to the past, a window on the Nazca spirit. At the end of each day's work, the team takes the newly recovered artifacts to a laboratory and storage facility located a few miles from the site. After 17 years, the collection represents an impressive inventory of Nazca culture. Each piece is painstakingly cataloged and analyzed before being fitted into the gigantic puzzle the researchers are trying to resolve. Like an impressionist painting, a portrait of Nazca civilization takes shape. Details, however, are still veiled in mystery. 
The art on ceramics was exclusively for religious purposes and conformed to criteria imposed by the priests. Images represented gods. Patterns, however, were never perfect. In a world ruled by the gods, was perfection reserved only for them? Seafaring divinities reveal the story of a people born between the sea and the mountains, between the Andes and the Pacific Ocean. But many different gods reigned in the Nazca pantheon. Cats, birds, lizards, and snakes. They were gods who showered blessings on men through their noses or mouths. The symbolism is very clear. Serpentine forms and wavy tongues. What a desert people expects first from their gods is water. The Rio Grande and its tributaries were the Nazca's Nile. Apart from extremely rare rains which normally have catastrophic consequences, drought here is the rule, and irrigation a necessity. The irrigation system invented by the Nazca's remains as a testament to their technological acumen. Designed with easy access for cleaning purposes, it is part of an intricate system of waterworks. Canals and filtering galleries called poquillos are used to funnel underground water sources from the Andes. Unmatched in pre-Columbian America, this network still irrigates the whole region. In thanks to their gods, the Nazcas built pyramids on the edge of the desert, now half hidden by the sand. These symbols of greatness beckon scientists and beg to be explored. At the base camp, Giuseppe Orofici holds a weekly meeting with his team. The weather is changing. The team will have to increase the pace. We are together here after one month's work, more or less, and we have to bear one very important thing in mind. After 17 years of excavations here at Kawachi, the 71 sites that have been opened up only represent 1% of the whole site. So even after 17 years, it's still difficult to speak about Kawachi. The climatic conditions and the effects of El Niño have made themselves felt a lot here, this year and last year, and we don't know how things will be next month. Consequently, I hope you understand the efforts we have to make now to finish this year's work as quickly as possible and with the best possible results. That's all now. Thanks very much, everyone, and work well. Work continues to go well. The team has cleared an extensive area to allow a detailed topographical study. As new areas are discovered, a small portion of the old city reveals itself. Professor Orofici is abruptly summoned to the site just before noon. In sector Y-16, a well has been opened, perhaps a tomb. To the archaeologist's surprise, 
it appears to be blocked by bundles of textiles. There's a lot of them. The tension mounts quickly as more are found. The well contains many more textiles than it was first thought, and they're apparently of surprising quality. One of the specialists is intrigued by the first sample, a piece decorated with tiny feathers. It appears to have been cut out. It's been blackened, but not burned. This is probably not a tomb. If there is one, it'll be lower down. Thank you. 